how much of your memory can you actually trust? Anthony here for D News. How good is your memory? I like to think that I've got a pretty good head for recall, but it's hard to say because we mangle, change, and even create fake memories regularly. Even people with incredibly superior memories tend to come up with details that never existed. Memories aren't stored in any one part of the brain, which is good because if they were, an injury to that area could wipe out everything you've ever done. Instead, memory is a wide brain activity. Getting a drum set for your birthday is an episodic memory. It's a personal story. That's in your medial temporal lobe. Playing a song on those drums is procedural memory. It's a skill that you've learned so well that you don't have to think about it to do it. Those happen in the striatum and the basal ganglia. Remembering something requires all of these parts to work together, not just recalling it, but assembling it. And our brain is constantly searching for patterns and meaning, and we're always getting smarter, and our view of the world is evolving. So the more we remember something, the more all those parts of our brain analyze it and decide to keep bits and throw other bits away, and maybe even splice in a part from from a similar memory or a particular relevant TV show. Uh, according to a Northwestern University study last year, every time we call up a memory, we actually change it. So how many of our memories are false. A leading researcher in the field is Elizabeth Loftus, and her first big study was in 1995, and it's usually referred to as the Lost in the Mall study. She grabbed some subjects and then had their families tell her stories about the subjects past without them knowing, like, oh, Lisa missed the bus on her first day of school. She would give the subjects a worksheet asking them to describe three real events from their lives and then one that didn't happen. Tell me about the time you got lost in the mall. The subjects were asked to fill out the worksheet every day for five days. And if they couldn't remember an event, they were told to just put, don't remember. 29% of the subjects remembered being lost in the mall. Not just that, the memory got more detailed every day they filled out the form. And what's interesting is that across all subjects, the real memories were only recalled 68% of the time, meaning the false mall memory was recalled about half as much as a real, actual memory. Now, we used to think that some people were immune to this due to something called highly superior autobiographical memory. These are people that could tell you what they ate for lunch on February 2nd, 1999, or what song was playing on their drive to work 13 Thursdays ago. But a UC Irvine study published last month found that these people were almost as likely to have a false memory implanted in them. About 20% of them were made to remember seeing non-existent video from a plane crash compared to 29% of people who didn't have HSAM. So that means that everyone is susceptible to false and changing memory. And that can be problematic when you think about things like therapy or criminal trials that rely on eyewitness accounts. But the Irvine findings could also mean that people with incredibly accurate memories don't have better systems than the rest of us. They just somehow capitalize on those weaknesses and use them to their advantage. And studying the differences in their recall could lead to some really fascinating insights about how the rest of us can better remember things. It's weird to think about how much you can or can't trust your own experiences, isn't it? Like, did I really save those orphans from the burning bus? I'm gonna assume that's real and the time I threw up on a girl while I was asking her out is not because it is best to use research to your own advantage. How trustworthy do you think your memory is? Let me know down below and subscribe for more D News.